like we're adding a couple more people on here, but uh, kick it off. Good afternoon, financial professionals. I'm Brady Serrell, the Senior Vice President of Disability Income here at E4 Insurance Services, welcoming you to The Brew, building relationships every week. Thank you for tuning in today. For those joining The Brew for the first time, welcome. We like to start all of our brewcasts by celebrating today as National Days. Uh, today is National Chocolate Chip Cookie Day. Kind of interesting. Um, have some of those uh, in my freezer right now, getting actually the um, the dough getting ready to be cooked from my nephew's fundraiser. Um, I don't know about you, but uh, as a kid, I did love to eat the chocolate chip cookie dough, not the actual cookies. So, um, of course, I don't know if that caused uh, salmonella or some other breakout from eating raw eggs, but could explain a lot of things if you know me very well. Uh, it's also National Straw Hat Day. Um, again, live here in uh, sunny Arizona. A hat is a necessity. So, you know, as we're getting close to 100 degrees, the straw hat is very appropriate. And then it's National Bring Flowers to Someone Day. Um, you know, I brought flowers on Sunday for Mother's Day. So uh, we are now at the point so i guess if you if there's someone loved in your life they always love flowers so again you could uh as brendan pressed to bring them all together you can bring uh some chocolate chip cookies some flowers uh in your straw hat and uh have a little picnic on your back patio so uh today's brew continues our may focus planning series uh on disability income and income protection in general with mike sir from one income one protection he will dive into the di discussion and the innovative tool they have created to facilitate client conversations. The income protection software analysis is a simple yet powerful presentation tool designed to decrease client objections and significantly improve closing percentages. It allows you to use data inputs specific to your client's situation and is the core of its entire system. We encourage you to use the chat box during our conversation today or raise the hand to ask a question. And then, as always, all attendees are entered into a drawing for a CE voucher and a Starbucks gift card, and we will announce the winner at the end. Thank you for tuning in, and Mike for joining us. Mike, you know, it's been, uh, you know, we kind of reconnected. Um, I think, you know, you and I met probably 1998 uh, when you just joined the Principal Financial Group, and uh, I was one of their senior DI underwriters. So, uh, great connecting again, and, uh, you know, I guess... You know, what was the premise? I know you spent a lot of time as a carrier and preaching on the pulpit of disability income and protecting their incomes. But uh, when you left principal, what was the thought on when you decided to create this tool? Well, thanks for having me, um, Brady, and everybody from E4. Um, it's good to see so many people on the call. Um, this is, you know, May's DI Awareness Month. And so I, I just appreciate what you're doing here and, and getting that DI message out there. And, um, as you mentioned, you know, Brady and I have known each other for a long time. Um, I spent 23 years at Principal. And um, when I retired, coming up on four years ago, um, I wanted to do something different, something not just different occupationally, but something different for our industry. Um, one thing that uh, when you've been around as long as I have for 38 years, um, you see a lot of ebbing, ebbing and flowing inside the marketplace. And the uh, the uh, the industry, the disability insurance industry, has effectively been flat for 25 years, and yet there's a lot of reasons behind that. But one of the core reasons is that it's not for lack of advisors or or that you know we don't care. It's not that's not it. It's the lack of tools. So that's why when I left principal, I wanted to build a tool that can help financial advisors and financial professionals just simply position and sell disability insurance more effectively. And so that's what we're going to be talking about here today. So it's nothing, not product specific, it's more process, right? Absolutely. It's gotten, it's carrier agnostic. So it doesn't matter what carrier doesn't mean. It's not designed just for the white collar or for the dock market. Absolutely. It's really designed for everything. So if somebody is a, anything from a high, high earner white collar down to a heavy blue collar, they all need the income protection conversation. And so it's not about carriers; it's about understanding problems and seeing where their where their problems may lie. And that's what the uh, the One Protection Platform is designed to do. Excellent. Well, let's let's take a look. Okay, great. Well, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, and um, let me know when this uh, comes aboard. You're good. Okay, that's great. 
I'll have to maximize and a few things here. So I'm going to minimize a couple of things. Okay. So one of the things I want to do is just kind of set this thing up. What, if I went around the whole, I was going to say the room, but the, the chat room, is that be more appropriate these days? Um, is that we could just all put down what are the top two or three or four um, objections that we get all the time? And what's the core of the problem? Um, there's a couple of things that I'll, I'll, I'll feather in throughout this, but the, uh, the top objections that um, we all get all the time is, oh, no, no, I've got that through work. I'm good to go. Well, we're going to deal with that. Or, you know, it'll never happen to me. I'm, you know, I'm 36 years old. I'm 10 feet tall and bulletproof and I work out and I don't drink and drive and all those little things that it's all comes down to something that we call optimism bias. Optimism bias is just how our brains are wired that we, we think very optimistically that somehow or another, everything's going to be okay, or we're going to figure it out. Optimism bias in the way that we define it is that it's the mistaken belief that some, that the odds of something bad happening to me are far lower than everyone else around me. That's that natural reaction to when they hear the word disability. By the way, use the word income protection. Use those words rather than disability. Because when you hear the, hear the word disability, people conjure up all sorts of you know things with Christopher Reeve or Stephen Hawking and just some real catastrophic stuff when actually most disabilities don't look anything like that. So um, I think using the word income protection. So it never happened to me. I've got that through work. We're very frugal. All those things are, are the natural things, uh, the objections that come up. So we built this tool, as Brady mentioned, it's called the IPSA, which is short for Income Protection Software Analysis. All good disability planning starts with understanding what the client has in force right now. When they say, oh, no, no, I've got that through work, say, that's great. Tell me about it. And then it gets real quiet because nobody has any idea what they have through work. And so what we did here is we built this, this, this program. And I'm just going to use a, an example here of a 36-year-old making $150,000 a year. They've married, got a couple of kids. Um, all the financial advisors on the call here today ask their clients a number of questions, one of which is, when do you expect to retire? Well, in this case here, we're using an age 30, starting at age 36, um, we're going to retire at age 67. And Mr. or Mrs. Client, do you expect your income to go up, down, or stay the same? That's going to go up. So we pick a factor. I just use 3% here. So I, I talk um, all over the country. I'll be in Des Moines tomorrow talking, actually be down there tonight. I mean, I'll be at the, I'll be, so I speak all over the country. And I always ask some, some, some questions in front of groups. I speak in a lot. Of, I've been a NAFA member for 36 years, huge NAFA proponent. We're, you know, the, uh, the, the One Protection uh, product. And, and we're, we're doing a lot of work with NAFA nationally in a lot of states like North Dakota and South Dakota and, and Minnesota and Iowa and so on. And I always ask three questions. You know, I'll be sitting in front of 100 advisors and I'll say, raise your hand if you believe that income protection is an important part of a financial plan. Out of 100 hands, how many hands do you think go up? 100. Everybody. But the second question is what it really kind of, you know, is the, is, the, is the why behind all this is raise your hand if you're comfortable having the income protection conversation. Out of 100, how many hands do you think go up? Two or three? It's like, whoa, most advisors just aren't comfortable with it and therefore they struggle with it or they simply avoid the topic of disability insurance. And so I always ask the third question, which is out of 100 people, raise your hand if you've at least tried to sell DI, disability insurance, in the last couple of years. 20 or 30 hands go up. So what it tells us is it's not for lack of caring. It's not for the lack of trying. It's the lack of having a good presentation to make this thing actually sink in. Um, a picture paints a thousand words. That's the, uh, that's the, uh, paints or speaks a thousand words. That's an old saying. And actually visual images are much more powerful than even that. There's a lady by the name of Dr. Lonel Burmark who writes a book about, wrote a book about this. And she says that visual images are 60,000 times more effective than words or text. It creates clarity. It triggers emotions. It's how our brains are wired to think, discern, and make decisions. And that's how we built One Protection. So I speak all over the country. Everybody, everybody's heard of the, the, the Wizard of Oz. I always say, just follow the yellow brick road. One Protection presentation has four elements to it. You don't have to do all of it. I'm going to show you the A to Z, and I'm going to get through them relatively quickly. 
but I call them the four P's of the yellow brick road. Just follow the yellow brick road. The first P is positioning the income asset, helping the client understand how valuable it really is. So I have a 36 year old making $150,000. They're going to have a 3% growth between now and age 67. Mr. and Mrs. Client, did you, you, did you know that you're going to make over $7.8 million between now and the time you retire? Stops them in their tracks. They had no idea they're going to make that kind of money. The second thing our software does is it helps make the unknown known by using the familiar. What are they familiar with? Well, they insure other assets every day without thinking twice, like their home, cabin, vehicle one, vehicle two, boat, motorcycle, all important things to insure. There's no mistake about it, but look at that income asset compared to the other assets our client is insuring every day without thinking twice. That first P is, is, is positioning the income as their most valuable asset. Clearly, it's the income that allows everything else to exist. Just to bring the point home, is that if you combined all those other assets into one value, it's about $820,000. Mr. and Mrs. Client, did you know that your income asset is worth over $7 million more than all the other assets you insure? The first P is positioning the income asset. Now they know what we're talking about and they can see it. They can see their numbers. This is very, this is client specific. The second P is problem. Clients only want to fix big problems. So behind the scenes, I put in a tax, effective tax rate. This is not a tax planning tool. This is a, a, a disability insurance presentation, but we don't live on 100% of our income. And, uh, so, and so we got to put some ta effective tax rate in there. So I put 24% behind the scenes. Um, this particular client has a group LTD plan. It's a 60% plan that covers the base salary. On this client here, $100,000 of their income is salary and $50,000 of bonus. The group LTD plan, which is a great employee benefit, um, but it covers 60% of the $100,000. So we you have know, a Mike and, and I'll step in one thing. Part this important part is understanding the plan. And you talk about the piece, and we you know well, we talk about what's your plan if you get sicker and can't work. But you know that group part. I think the statisticals will what thirty some percent of all employers have a group long term disability plan. Only thirty. So if yours does, that's great. But you have to understand how it works. And I think you know, kind of taking a look at your uh, example here is you know they think they have sixty percent, but then it's only their base salary which is about 90% of all group plans. So, I mean, that's a great representation here. Well, thanks, Brady. And it's really two problems here. The second one is it's taxable. That, exactly. That's the other part. Yeah, this <laughs> Again, you kind of keep two. going into all the groups, not bad. You just have to understand how it works. Amen. Yeah, just understanding it. So from a net annual perspective, here's what they're living on, 114. Here's what the group LTD plan would net out at. So they've got a $68,000 net income problem. But once again, clients only want to fix big problems. And so let me take it a step further. This is just a one-year caption. So what if we look at this in kind of realistic out-of-work scenarios? You ask a 36-year-old, do you expect to get disabled anytime soon? Of course not. I mean, I'm 36, I'm 10 feet tall, I'm bulletproof, I work out, and I don't drink and drive and all that kind of stuff. Hey, right? hey Mike, you got to remember, it's, it's not disabled. It's sick or hurt and can't work. <laughs> That's right. Because no one's going to get disabled, right? That's no one's going right. to get disabled. Well said. But if you ask that 36-year-old, do you know anybody who's ever battled a health event at some point in their life, like cancer or stroke or a heart attack? He's going to say, yeah, you know, my dad had back problems. How old was he when he was out? He was 52. So if, if, if that happened to you and he was out for four years, if that happened to you, Mr. Client here, um, did you know that even with your group LTD plan, you'd have a 640, almost a $646,000 income loss. Nobody survives that. There is, unless you've got tens of millions of dollars laying around, which, which again, there's, a, there's some people that do have a lot of money laying around, but most people can't survive. I heard yesterday that 40% of the United States working population um, can't would wouldn't be able to afford their basic necessities of being out of work for one month, just one month. So imagine being out for four years. What if could never recover? I know I've been around for a while, um, as a lot of us on the call have been. We all know people that have battled cancer, have had strokes, and had traumatic brain injuries, and um, you name it, we've seen it. We've lost people. 
Um, we, 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 I know I could go, re- I could spend the rest of the time just talking about claims, pe- people I've known that have been disabled. But what if, and this, cl- this client here is, what if they couldn't recover starting at age 52 and they couldn't recover? With the group LTD plan, by the way, remember they're patting themselves on the back saying, no, no, I've got that through work, I'm good to go. No, you're not. There you see right now, I've got a three point, they'd have a $3.4 million income loss. That's a problem. Nobody survives it. That's with the short and long-term disability. But what if that group LTD wasn't there for them? What if they started their own gig in their 40s? Yep. And then oh, again, I think you, where you go, Mike, is hopes and dreams becomes GoFundMe. That's, and, and hope people. That's where it all begins. So if they lost their group LTD, this is a great opportunity to talk about Group LTD is, Brady, as you mentioned before, it's a good thing. You just have to understand what it's designed for. And if you lost that group LTD plan, it's not there for you. Now what? So clearly we're building the, 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 uh, you know, the whole objection objective here is to help them understand they've got a major problem here. And by the way, there's a lot of people on the phone here. And I know E4 is really big in the life insurance. What if it, Mr. and Mrs. Client, what if it was a premature death at age 52? I've lost many, I know a number of people that have died at age 52. How much life insurance do you have? Oh, I got 500,000 a 20 year term. Did you know your family's gonna burn through that in about two years? Are you comfortable with that amount? Whoa. So our users are selling dramatically larger life insurance policies. It doesn't get into IUL, BUL, whole life or term. It doesn't get into that. You guys do all that. But what it does do is it just clearly, and they can see that that 500,000 a 20 year term isn't enough. Well, and, and you know what? It's funny you said that, Mike, because uh, we had a Tom Hagnett at our BBT last week, and he said uh, anything under a million doesn't exist anymore, hmm. and you only sell term insurance in units of a million. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> so it's kind of like, you know, again, you're, to your point, you know, even at a $100,000 a year income, you're burning through quickly. You yep. know, you have a, even a million dollars. That's not a lot. It's just not that much money. So it's really important to have clients see it. So remember, the visuals are so powerful here. So here's what we've done so far. We've positioned the income at the, as their most valuable asset. Uh, make the unknown known by using the familiar, looking at the other things that they insure. Um, the second thing we did, the second P is problem. They clearly, by this time, if they don't acknowledge that we had a pretty big problem, talk about something else. They're not going to buy disability insurance anyway. So if they have a key, big problem, then we keep going. The third P is how do you present plan solutions in a way that clients can easily understand? One of the things when we talk to advisors, I say, how do you currently present? Well, I get, you know, I go to my, you know, I get a bunch of illustrations and then I forward it on to the client and then they say, I'll think about it. And that's the end of that. There's just no real understanding of what we've done so far is that they've got a asset to worth protecting. It's their most valuable asset and they've got a big problem. Any length of time that they're out, they kind of lose everything. All that short, medium, long-term savings and all those other assets, they all just go away. Um, I was reading yesterday, the number one reason, just to confirm, the number one reason for bankruptcies every single year um, is uh, is health are health events. And m- most years, the number one reason for home foreclosures, it's been a little different with economic issues later on, but the number one reason normally for home foreclosures are health events. So we've got to start helping them understand, you know, not only what's at risk, but how do we now solve the problem? So the third P, how do we present plan solutions in the way the client can easily understand? Instead of showing them a bunch of illustrations, illustrations always say do two things really well. It doesn't matter the carrier. I love all the carriers, but it does two things really well. It show it, it makes it really look complicated and makes it look really expensive. You've got the monthly benefit. And the annual premium on one page, they think, whoa, this is the most expensive insurance I've ever seen in my life. It's out of context. They don't even understand what their problem is. And we're talking about premiums. It's too early. So here's what I, what, what I think works best. And this is my 38 years of my business partner, Larry. It's his 25 years. Find the right carrier. Work with E4. Let Brady or team find the right carrier and show them two or three options versus principal versus standard versus mass mutual versus guardian so on and so forth whoa it's just too much information so consider this here's 150,000 of income here's their group ltd plan 
what would a comprehensive plan, the good, better, best, gold, silver, bronze, comprehensive, modern, basic, you can call it anything you want, but I just call it comprehensive, modern, basic. Comprehensive plan is a really good plan. For $220 a month, they can have a, a Cadillac or, or Lexus, whatever you want to call it. It's a really good plan. A moderate plan is a little less benefit, a little short of a benefit period for, for $175 a month. A basic plan, which is a five-year benefit period, only for Three thousand dollars a month because the mortgage, you know, just trying to cover the mortgage, utilities, and groceries. Um, you know, sometimes that's effective. Most of the time, the clients don't. Um, they need something much uh, more robust than that. And so, what we want to do is put it in perspective. All, all, all compared against their current plan. Here's where it comes alive, on a gross basis, but more importantly, on a net basis. Here's how they would start to they would perform for you. So the 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 best plan. The comprehensive plan for $220 a month keeps them pretty whole. A little bit of a gap on an annual basis. This is annual dollars here on a net basis. The moderate plan, that's $20,000. And by the way, this is best case scenario when the red here, because expenses tend to go up when someone's too sick or hurt to work. They don't go down. And so this is like best case scenario. So all of a sudden we're looking going, wow, the moderate plan, okay, I've got, it's certainly better than where we're, where we're at today. But the basic plan, that's that's 32000 Said another way, you'd be hemorrhaging money at a pretty robust rate other than the comprehensive plan. You see what we're doing is we're helping the clients identify, understand and identify their problems and getting them in on the conversation. We don't want to sell anything. We want to help them buy the right coverage. And by going through this exercise, they can, they're can they making decisions on their own. They're getting it. Um, and then if you sell catastrophic benefits, I built that into the, uh, um, the comprehensive and the, and the moderate plan. And uh, the way the comprehensive works is this additional benefit if they were so severely disabled that they couldn't do two of six activities of daily living. They couldn't feed themselves. They couldn't go to the bathroom. For those of you who sell long-term care are familiar with that. It has that same kind of thing there. Um, it's that extra money that's available when someone is really struggling. There's never enough money if someone can't feed themselves and they need that additional support. So this is a great way to um, toggle these things in and start having that conversation. Um, I don't know if it's solar flares or what, but the system's a little slower, maybe it's just because we have a lot of people on, on the, uh, um, on the, on the um, there we go. And um, so, I think it's just a little bit slow. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, kind of where you're at saying, Mike, is, you know, one of the things that, you know, when we look at plans, it's it's not about, you know, the you know, product is one thing I said, but really, if you tell us what your need is and what your budget is, you can design a plan. And I think what your software really shows well is, you know, the need portion of it. Right. It's trying to uncover the needs. Um, I'm going to get back on here, too. I'm, maybe I was thinking it might refresh. There it is. Um, and so the that that's well said, Brady. So this is how we get that part of the conversation going and helping them really starting to see what the benefits are of the good, better, best, or gold, silver, bronze. Now I take it a step further. Remember our out of work windows here? This is clearly showing that they've got a major problem when they're out of work for an extended period of time, that there's going to be a huge financial impact. Um, there's going to be... A, there's going to be a huge financial impact here. So the point of this whole thing here is to be able to look at those new additional coverages and um, and see if we can't help them see what how these new plan designs would perform. So here's how it works. Here, if you recall, we dropped we stopped at age 52 going you know, start a disability starting at age 52 all the way and they couldn't recover again with their group LTD plan. They've got a three point four million dollar gross income loss. On a net basis, um, it's a little bit less than that. So our goal here is to look at that net income loss of $2.8 million and see how our solutions can solve the problem. So here's how we do it. Here's how a comprehensive plan would perform. Here's their original income loss by buying the comprehensive plan. It would reduce that loss down. We put that in yellow because there's still some caution. The group LTD, for example, doesn't have a COLA. It's stuck. The individual DI is doing a great job. Here's the point. We saved the client. The client saved $2.1 million of net income. This is how they stay in their home. 
This is how their kids still go to school. This is how they can still put food on the table. This saves everything. But Mike, oh, wait, wait. Can you show me that that basic plan, the cheap one, the, uh, uh, this, uh, the bronze plan? Sure. This is a five-year benefit period, 180-day elimination period for $3,000 a month, just enough to cover the mortgage, utilities, and groceries. Is this a good idea? Clients look at this and they go, whoa, all I did is save $259,000. I don't want anything to do with that. So what, we, what we're doing, everybody, is we're helping the clients understand what adequate coverage looks like. Now, if they can only afford a, 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 a bronze plan, fine, something's better than nothing. But most of the time they look at this, they say, you know what, I don't want anything to do with that. You know, I don't insure my home like that. I don't insure my Tahoe like that. I don't insure anything like that. Why would I do that to my most valuable asset? So here's a way for them to really be in on um, how to best solve their problem. Most of our, there's a, there's a couple of takeaways out of this. Most of our advisors that are our customers, um, our customer, by the way, is whoever wants to proactively grow their DI should really take a look at this because it really helps them. But our big, big measurements are closing ratios. Most advisors close 10 or 15, unless you're really good at this, really an expert at it, most advisors close 10 or 15% of the cases that they present. They may be trying, but it's just, you know, hey, I'll go home and think about it is usually what they get. Our advisors are closing 80 or 90% of their cases. The second thing, though, which is to this point here, is that we're just, uh, we're just helping our advisors sell more adequate disability insurance. They're buying better plans. They're not just racing to the bottom to get something in, in place. They're actually thinking about what would actually be good for them and their, their financial situation. And then um, the last thing, it, it, the other big thing that comes out is you just get more at bats. When you can do something to have a repeatable process, it's just easier to do it over and over again. You'll just do it more often. First P, just to review, positioning the income assets. Second P, problem. Clients only want to fix big problems. Number three is presenting plan solutions in a way the client can easily understand. Number four, premium. One of the biggest objections that you hear out there, oh, no, no, disability insurance is so expensive. Well, when it's out of context, it is. <laughs> so how do we deal with that? So let's assume that they bought a comprehensive plan from you and uh, never got disabled, which is good news, folks. Um, that original income asset, the amount of money they're going to make between now, age 36 and age 67, with a 3% growth, is $7.8 million. If they buy a comprehensive plan and pay premium all the way to age 67 and never become disabled, their income asset only drops from 7.8 to 7.75 million. It's just a dusting off the top. The art of insurance, I always say this, buying insurance doesn't change the risk. Whether you're about, talking about homeowner's insurance or life insurance, yeah, I could buy all the life insurance. I mean, it doesn't change my risk of dying. It's just who's going to accept the risk, me and my personal assets? Or are we going to shift all or part of it to an insurance company? That's the art of insurance. So we're just taking a purse, a small amount, a little amount here to cover a lot. That's the leveraging of premium dollars. So if they bought this plan from you at age 36 and never had to use it, it's just a dusting off the top. It won't even affect their standard of living. Now, and take... Mike, and that's the one part I, I tell, I say is, you know, it's the insurance that, you know, somebody, an advisor asked me once, hey, my client's 65 and retired. What does he do with his disability insurance? I said, stop paying the premium. And they go, well, does he get anything? I said, well, you could send him a card and say, congratulations on retiring and not being disabled. Um, kind of <laughs> saying a joke, saying that jokingly, but the other part is, you know, that, you know, that total premium paid, I look at it. So if you're 67, you know, your average age expectancy is about 20 years. So if you had an extra $150,000, are you going to spend over 20 years? Are you going to live any differently? Hmm. The answer is probably no. That's good really just help them putting putting in perspective. Whereas any of those out of work windows, there is no retirement. It's just destroyed. That's 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 what the point we've got to get across is that shifting, taking a little bit to protect the rest, that, that's the best decision. Now I'm gonna do one more thing here. Remember in the fourth P, which is putting premium in perspective, is remember the remember our um benefit uh the the other things that they insure every day without thinking twice, like they're home and cabin and vehicles and so on and so forth. These are all important um, to insure. So if a tornado 
comes rolling through tomorrow, wipes it all out. They have everything properly insured and they're good to go. The question is how much does it cost to protect that $820,000 of assets? About $7,200 a year for homeowner's insurance, for the cabin insurance, for the boat insurance, for the, for the, um, for the, the multiple uh, vehicles they have. Um, we all do this every day without thinking twice. But what if that same tornado came ripping through tomorrow and disabled the client and they could never work again? And they, if they bought a comprehensive plan for you, look at the amount of benefit between the group LT, and this is net benefit, this is net group, and then their individual DI, they'd receive $4.9 million of benefit. The question is, how much does it cost to have that peace of mind? The answer is about $26.40 per year. So here's the point. Mr. and Mrs. Client, for $4,500 less per year, you've got a protection value of over $4 million more. And if it was a catastrophic claim, starting tomorrow, you're catastrophically disabled and you could never, it, it's a much higher number. The point is that disability insurance is not the most expensive insurance. It's actually the least expensive insurance in their entire portfolio and arguably the most important. If there's not income, there are no homes and cabins and, and vehicles. It all starts going away. You start to lose everything. And so that's how we help put premium in perspective. So that's the A to Z. You don't have to do all of it. If you only had five minutes, you could do something way, way sooner than that. But I want to show everybody what this thing's capable of. And if there's a um, question out there, feel free to, um, to go ahead and ask it now. Um, Excellent, Mike. Well, again, you know, we, we appreciate you coming on today. And you know, again, everyone, thanks for tuning in. And, um, you know, while we do wait for those final questions, uh, I'd like to remind you that today's brew is um, and our fully full library are recorded and shared on the brew blog and on our e4.insurance website. Um, you know, again, the, today's recording will be posted um, and emailed to advisors later. Um, we do have a giveaway. Uh, can you pick a number between, what are we at? One in, let's see how many we ended up with today on here. One in 35. Mike? How about 21? <laughs> 21. Uh, our winner is uh, Derek Brunsberg. So, Derek, um, you will be getting a CA voucher and Starbucks gift card uh, on the way from here, us at E4. Um, you know, I know one thing, Mike, you, you know, before we wrap up and uh, talk about next week's brew, um, you did mention a special offer for E4 advisors. So I'll give you just about a minute to just uh, let us know what that offer is. Okay. Well, great. Um, I want to thank you. Thanks, everybody, again, for being on the call today and listening to it on the recording. Um, it's great to talk about something that's so important. Um, the A uh, uh, couple things, one of which is um, be sure, I mean, this is my challenge to you, write down all the people you know that need this conversation and just start with the ones you already have as clients or prospects um, between the ages of of 25 and 60, don't take your eye off that 55 year old. I always say that because everybody I know, I'm in that age range, a little older than that. And uh, everybody's still working. So write down everybody who needs to have this conversation and work with Brady and team to just get this thing going. Because if you don't do it, who's going to help them? And if you get that phone call in the middle of the night, you're going to wish you just had a different kind of conversation. So with E4, we have a partnership that we have a um, two things, one of which is um, our normal pricing, we're a cloud-based system and is a, is, we, is a $99 per month as a subscription. The whole idea is if this helps you sell one average case size, it pays for, for a year and then some. But don't buy this if you're only going to sell one a year. <laughs> it isn't for you. But, um, but what we do with, the, with a 30-day free trial, but what we do since we have a relationship with E4 is we extend that free trial for three months. So we use it for free, get one-on-one -on -one training for free. For three months, go sell stuff, get some cases rolling and see if this is a fit for you. And then it's a 20% discount. So it's $79 a month. So anybody who has any interest in this, please reach out uh, to Brady and Brady will help uh, get, get everybody in touch with each other. Um, if you want to do a one-on-one -on -one demo, or if you know people in your office that need to see this, um, just get in touch with us. We'll do the same thing. And uh, we'll talk that through and uh, awesome. get things rolling. Perfect. Thank you, Mike. 
Um, on next week's brew, we continue with our Disability Awareness Month topic with myself and Steve Walker, our Vice President of Institutional Accounts, to discuss to discuss a case study on how an inquiry for individual disability coverage on a new executive at a manufacturing company actually turned into a six life executive GSI carve out. So um, come in next week and thanks everyone and have a great day.